Pangeos is an $8 billion, 650 meter wide, 600 meter long Terra yacht, a gigastructure, or I guess Terra structure, capable of hosting an entire city. Not long ago, this thing was all over the internet, getting caught up in a full 72 hour hype cycle. But this project, aside from being hilariously stupid on pretty much every level, as we'll see, also represents something quite sinister. So the Pangeos Terra yacht is a yacht slash floating city. As long as under city, we mean like 500 people or something. And it's shaped like a turtle. Why? No idea. It's essentially a big floating park surrounded by luxury residences. Because that's what you want on a ship. Parks containing hundreds of tons of soil. Also planting trees into your ship's hull, that's an idea worthy of an award. A Darwin Award. The inside of the ship and the flippers, I guess, are filled with villas and apartment buildings that look suspiciously like the ones in Surviving Mars. I actually have to commend the Pangeos team. They blessed us with a metric ton of sketches and CGI visualizations so we can really take a good look at what this project entails. Oh boy. As I was looking at these visualizations, things got weird pretty quickly. Let's start with how they plan on building this thing. Indeed, how will this thing be built? It's quite a conundrum, but don't you worry, the Pangeos team has you covered. We can build it. Imagine to join together the world biggest yacht firms in an unique project. Wow, look at all these companies taking part in the none of the below brands are now involved yet in the project. Oh, <laughs> that's unfortunate. On their website, they have these bizarre renders of a dry dock in the middle of the sea? No, that can't be right. We're missing something. Let's see what they have to say about it. The building process. 1. Dredging one square kilometer of sea by building a circular dam. 2. Once dried, the terrain will possible to start preparing the basement area? Great, so they actually want to build this thing in the sea. Like right in the sea. I thought this render was just some concept art, but apparently no. They seriously want to dredge a square kilometer of sea and then build a circular 3.5 kilometer long dam around it. Then wait for the seafloor to dry out and then build the yacht inside the circle they've created. In the sea. At this point, the Pangeos team was likely thinking thinking what country would be willing to even entertain the idea of building this thing near their shores. It's a tough question. They would need a country run by complete morons who, by some miracle, also have more money than God. Hmm. Saudi Arabia, alright. Hang on, this is a different thing now. Did we drop the at sea circular dry dock plan? Apparently so. I love it when multi-billion dollar mega projects show us contradictory plans on the same web page. The construction of a similar sizes vessel, comma, involves the realization of a specific shipyard slash dam infrastructure that floods levitating the terra yacht when it will be launched as 2033. Well, that was a sentence. So now they want to dig out a 600 by 650 meter dry dock on land and then concrete it? So that would involve a 39 hectare concrete surface. And that would be separated from the sea by a 650 meter long dam. All this for a single use dry dock to build one single ship. Fuck yeah. Economics? What's that? A new cryptocurrency? Never heard of it. So that's where the Pangeo Stereot will be built. Hang on, are those cranes made of Lego? Oh no, they pulled a 3D model of a crane from somewhere, but they didn't realize it was a toy crane. Look, they even have plastic dials on them that you're supposed to turn with your hand to operate the mechanism. Hell yeah, we want to build this 8 billion dollar mega yacht, but we can't quite tell the difference between a real crane and one made of Lego. Oh look, there's a golf cart there, at an active construction zone. It's from their other renders of the finished yacht, which they forgot to delete here. Also, I love how the scaffolding around the ship is isn't connected by any ladders or stairs for the workers to use. Cool. God, there is so much stupid stuff to go over. I almost went crazy collecting them all together. Look at all these damn tabs. Can someone help me? Oh, hello, strange Norwegian men. What's that? There is a browser that can actually manage your tabs properly? That's right, Opera came up with Tabfulness. They have an actually useful way of organizing your tabs and getting more work done. So if you want to open 10 billion tabs in your browser, you can create tab islands for each category to keep things organized. A true, stress-free experience. It is just so perfect. And let's face it, Opera just looks better. Opera is also doing a contest right now where you, as in you, can apply to live on the world's loneliest island, uh, get it, near Iceland for seven days where they will pay you $10,000 for becoming their tapfulness guru for a week. Use my link to download Opera and to apply to become a tapfulness guru. Opera is free and it has changed my browsing for the better. Thank you for checking out Opera. It was actually quite nice of them to sponsor this video. And their browser helped me stay organized as I was putting the script together. Go get it now and become tabful just like me. Because tabs equal fish. That reminds me, we have an aquatic monstrosity to discuss.
So the Pangeo Stereot's proposed construction. On the construction side, there are these random boxes lying around, which are apparently cement silos. What, do they want to build the Terriot out of concrete? Apparently so. The roads inside the Terriot do seem to be made out of concrete. Yeah, concrete. Famously useful shipbuilding material for a ship that's definitely shaped for moving around on water. It goes without saying, but such a large and heavy structure would break immediately during the first storm it encounters. Also, they plan on propelling this thing with what appear to be large jet ski engines that have no visible water intake. So this mega project so far has to be the stupidest thing I've ever seen. If our currency was backed up by idiocy, the Pangeo Stereot would cause instant global hyperinflation. Let's look at what they're planning to put on this thing. As I said, it looks like they want to put concrete roads inside their ship on which they would run little golf carts. Because literally everything being a 600 meter walk away from you is just too much to handle. And apparently every villa will have its own little golf cart. So you know, congratulations, you've created floating suburbs. In front of your suburban villa at sea, you'll have these narrow pools, so you'll have something to fall into at 3 a.m. on your way back from a party. In these pools, you'll be able to do sup or stand up pedal, and also kayaking apparently. It will be a ton of fun until you reach the end of the pool after like 4 seconds of pedaling, which is too narrow for turning around. Also, should a larger wave tilt the terrier to the side a bit, these pools would spill over and flood the ground floor of every villa. You might have noticed that most of these residences and apartments are in the high luxury category. That's because this project is essentially a floating retreat for the ultra-rich, much like how Elon Musk's Mars colony would be just an extraplanetary doomsday bunker for the top 1%. Pangeos even sports a royal palace, if you can believe that, we'll get to that later. The website promises Pangeos will house 60,000 guests, so that's just the guests, not including staff or the long-term residents of the yacht. Because yes, they actually plan on having people live on this thing. And I'm calling bullshit on that 60,000 figure. This is what a 60,000 guest capacity looks like. That's the MHP Arena in Stuttgart, which, coincidentally, is about as big as the Terriot's main body. So if we assume that on the Pangeo Terriot they want to put people in hotel rooms instead of shoving them in like sardines, that means instead of 60,000, Pangeos will probably be able to house a couple hundred guests, if that. The current largest cruise ship in the world, the Icon of the Seas, with its length of 364 meters, can accommodate 7,600 at the absolute maximum. And that ship is absolutely jam-packed with little cabins. On the Pangeo Terriot, you have these big and spacious villas and a handful of cabins on five floors. So this thing will not accommodate 60,000, 7,600 or even a thousand guests. Just a few hundred guests, maybe. But those guests won't be nobodies, because apparently dozens will arrive by helicopter parked chaotically on the roof of the Terriot, without any marked helipads. So that's reassuring, if one of them slides down the roof, it will crash right into the villas below. And those trendy little balconies inside the wall will be a lot of fun to be on once a helicopter comes around. And apparently, they plan on landing helicopters inside the ship's structure too, on the tiny building, a meter away from a house. In their promotional video, you can actually see that the helicopter's rotors would clip off part of the house. Not to mention, if those windows are open during landing, that whole apartment would be wrecked. Wait, how come there is a landing pad on this building, but not on that one? Wait, there it is! So apparently, they just forgot to draw the other helipad for an $8 billion project. Putting two helipads in this area is an outstanding idea, meters away from residential villas. The transit concept of the Terriot is absolutely bonkers. Helipads in front of your window, helicopters scattered on the roof, drift circuits for golf carts to tumble down, break the window below and then roll into the ocean. Oh, and a Fiat 500, ready for your 10 second commute in the morning. Oh, and uh, do you like swimming, bathing, the feeling of water enveloping your body? On the world's largest cruise ship, the Icon of the Seas, you can experience all that in seven different pools. That's a lot, right? Now try the Pangeo Stariot's 150 pools. And those are just the ones I could count on the renders. There might be more on the inside. These pools are literally everywhere, including in this random, dark corner at the front of the ship. What is this? The punishment zone? The goon deck? The inside of the ship also raises some worrying questions. Apparently, the water in the middle of the ship is not the ocean, but another pool that looks about 50 centimeter deep. If you sail a ship in there, you'll have scratched up the ceiling of the power room, so now your ship is out of power and feeling of 
with water. Also, the crew will go into one of these windowless rectangular pods inside the hall, so that's promising. Should civilization collapse in a climate catastrophe, rest assured that the hundreds of billionaires inhabiting Pongeos will be just fine, and their ship will have enough capacity to resurrect the transatlantic slave trade in the post-apocalypse. Up to 60,000 accommodations, you say? That can satisfy the demand of a lot of plantations. Because really, who do you think would consider buying property on this thing? Rich people who think the world is coming to an end. The sea levels rising isn't a problem as long as you're floating on it. If this project would ever become a reality for some reason, it would immediately become a doomsday bunker for the top 1%. Yeah, that explains all those yachts all around and those helicopters everywhere. You think you'll be flying in those? Be my guest for $500 per hour in your average four-seater. No, there would be no regular people on this thing. Nobody below a seven-figure net worth. To recap, so far we have seen a dry dock built in the sea with cranes made of Lego, a massive ship covered by suburban villas, concrete roads, 150 poles, and bearing hundreds of tons of soil for its parks. And they say it will accommodate 60,000 guests beyond the inhabitants and staff. Plus there is a single Fiat 500 on board. At this point you might be thinking, there's no goddamn way this can get any dumber. But you just wait, you just wait. Oh, but what is this? Unreal Estate. Welcome to Pangeo's Unreal Estate. The Unreal Estate is a NFT crowdfunding project by paying in cryptocurrency it is possible to purchase virtually the selected space. This will generate an initial budget to step into a more sophisticated augmented reality, the Pangeos Metaverse 2023. Selected space, comma, will be available in the virtual scenario as your private room with your own access key. Hell yeah! Apartment VIP, a low resolution shitty render for just 0.2 Ethereum, also known as $461.08. Royal Palace for 2305 bucks. I knew this was a doomsday bunker for the rich. Oh no. This project is incredible. They have managed to speedrun the bullshit bingo with mock speed. You got a horrible project for the top 1% with insane specs, completely nonsensical renders that break the laws of physics, hilarious mistakes and contradictions on proud display, and they also peddle NFTs and offer passes to the metaverse. Not gonna lie, it's pretty bold to pull out the NFT card two years after Dan Olson published his video about NFTs. In summary, this has to be one of the stupidest, most badly thought out projects I've seen in a while. Nothing make sense about this train wreck whatsoever. And yet, at one point, this thing was all over the internet. Apparently, all you need to get your three-day fame in the global tech soy cycle is to put out some big fuck-off render that looks vaguely impressive and futuristic if you don't look at it for more than five seconds. But I did, unfortunately, and so here we are. Thank you for watching. And don't forget that Opera is out there for you, ready to turn you into a tapfulness guru. If you like my content, please consider becoming a patron or a channel member here on YouTube. And I'll be seeing you next time.